Hello, uh, welcome to another kind of breakdown video uh, where I talk through some of the things I have learned over producing a little project like this one. The concept is basically, well, it's because I wanted to draw a frog and I came up with a sort of theme afterwards of him being an exterminator. Um, and I know it kind of feels odd that he would need all of this sort of uh, equipment because why doesn't he just use his tongue and eat the flies? But I thought it would be quite nice, just and it adds to the whole absurdity of it all. So I drew the little sketch on a Surface Go on the Leonardo app, which is fantastic. And I've also been doing a little bit of sculpting on the Surface Go and found it... Yeah, it's not the smoothest experience in the world, but it is pretty capable. And I think I'll be doing more of that in the future, because it's just super portable. Okay, with the drawing done... It was time to sort of plonk down some primitives and kind of just sort of mass out the form using um, subdivisional surfaces as well and taking advantage of the skin modifier for the legs and arms. So you can just kind of use edges to um, pull out nice sort of thin limbs and then converting everything to mesh and jumping over to the sculpt environment. The sculpting was uh, done using a mix of Dino Topo and the Voxel Remesh to sort of add details when it needs it. Uh, and then just kind of building up details to the point where I could see how it was going to be and, you know, I could see the general form and I was happy enough to start remeshing it. And to remesh it, I didn't go the uh, manual route of remeshing it, although this probably would have resulted in a slightly better mesh. Instead, I used the fantastic Quad Remesher add-on, which is a one-click solution, pretty much. Um, I used to do this by going into ZBrush and taking advantage of Z Remesher. Uh, and Quad Remesher is basically the same thing from the same developer. The only difference I can see is the it's missing the ability to draw edge guides like you can do in ZBrush. But still, the result is good, and you can break up surfaces by materials and stuff, so it has an element of control there, too. And with the character mesh done I extended I extracted sorry part of the body to use as the polo top shirt thing and the rest was kind of just sort of sub demodeling uh, for the hard surfaces as well as the environmental elements uh, to get more detail in the frog and shirt I slapped on a multi-res modifier so I could sculpt even more details like the boils on the skin here and the cloth and the wrinkles I've yet to play around with the cloth brushes actually um but they look really cool so i should definitely try and give that a go okay moving on to the materials um yes this is incredibly messy and i have yet to organize it and there could pr probably be a lot of optimization that would ha could happen quite easily but if i try and talk you through some of these nodes firstly for the mainly for all, all of the organic elements like the frogs and the the lily pads and flowers and stuff like that they have been uv unwrapped so i've gone into edit mode selected edges and unwrapped um the frog body has a 2k base color texture there's also uh, a voronoi texture with a color ramp to create these sort of smaller blotches and imperfections in the skin uh, a 2k painted bump texture also for the even smaller details like the kind of wrinkles around the lips here as well as the kind of stitching around the shirt and the hat. A chain of nodes was also used to tweak the color output, uh, make it a little bit sort of redder and plug that into the subsurface color. So we get that nice sort of jelly-like feel. And I really like using this cracked paint photo that I took um, for the skin and eye textures. It kind of breaks it up and gives it a, a more natural feel. And I also created a vertex map for the toes and fingertips to use as a mask and mix in a little bit of glass shader to create the, the fingertips, uh, to give them the sort of sort of sticky, globular look. Branding on the various spray cans was drawn up in Affinity Designer, uh, which has some very important uh, instructions here on the back. There was some volumetric shading going on as well, uh, some gram mist here with the density fall off being driven by three empties as well as procedural noise to just break everything up a bit. 
there was steam also coming from the spout here, um, which had a spherical fall off and uh, a kind of S shaped flow being displaced by um, plugging in uh, RGB color to the vector input. And that moves us on to the lighting, which was mainly a sun lamp for the key light being pushed through what I believe they call gobos. But this is basically just a an alpha stencil of a tree. Um, in retrospect, it would have been quite nice to animate this. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe next time. There's also massive black blocks, which you can see here, which are to occlude the light even more. And a little bit of a light just behind the character to create this sort of nice room light and bring it out from the background a little bit more. Rigging wasn't too complex. Automatic weights worked well for the legs and arms as they were quite sort of thin. Uh, and then some manual weight painting was required around the head and torso. The hard surfaces were parented to the nearest bone in the armature. And um, some of these are curves also. So the curve points, control points, like in the pipe and the strap here, were hooked to the bones also, with the exception of one being hooked to an empty, so I can sort of animate the wobble. The legs and arms were IK, and the spray gun thing he's holding was hooked up via a child constraint on his right hand and a damped track on his left hand. Uh, I think this could be quite a nice sort of rig as well for, a, let's say, a snooker player. Or a violinist. The eyes were parented to bones as well, with the addition of lattices sort of deforming them a little bit to retain that sort of stylized look. Now, the animation was quite quick to put together, um, as it's just a sort of an idol of him softly kind of shuffling around. Um, the eyes were on the constant interpolation, so they kind of dart around quickly and it was easy to just plonk in keyframes. The flies also, they were simple IK rigs with sort of two controllers uh, and these were animated using the noise modifier in the graph editor just to save an extra little bit of time. The water here was displaced with the wave modifier which when added, you know, you have to tweak it a little bit but for the most part it just kind of, it does all the work for you which is great. And the steam on the spout was a volume in a cube with the bottom verts being parented to the spout bone, so it looks as though the you know the the steam follows the the spout as it moves around very gently, and the uh, the noise texture that was driving the steam is also being offset vertically. I also use some disc meshes uh, with a vertex map to create some radial effects. So we have a soft glow in the background, and we have like this vignette in the foreground. Uh, both of these are attached to the camera, so when the camera moves, you know, it doesn't move out of frame. Then everything was rendered out in 24 frames a second at full 4K because EV is amazing. I also set up uh, some studio lights for a Cycles version of just the character. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I feel like the character is still a little bit lost in the environment, like there's, there's too many things going on. Um, and I would have liked to have tried out some eyelids, some blinking eyelids, uh, I think that would have worked really well with the lattice forms. Anyway, I hope some of this rambling was useful. Um, I'm going to upload the scene onto my Patreon as well, so if you want to just sort of download and play around with it yourself, then feel free to do so, as long as you don't use it in any commercial projects and stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching.